Hey guys, I'm Styler and in this video I'm going to present and review the Yumi Plus E where the E stands for the Extreme Edition. This is currently the cheapest China smartphone out with 6GB RAM and the first model in the world using the MediaTek Helio P20 chipset clocked at 2.3GHz. So let's start the review. So there is a normal and an extreme edition of the Yumi Plus. The difference is that the E version comes with 6GB RAM, the Helio P20 and more internal storage. The rest like features, materials and design is kind of similar with these two. One thing to notice is that the E version comes with a totally black backside, while the standard Plus version is just grey. To check all the listed specifications have a look below in the video description. On the front we find a 5.5 inch LTPS Full HD IPS display with high brightness, good viewing angles and vivid colors. The glass is something called Dynorex T2X1 with 2.5D curved edges and it is actually scratch resistant and it feels pretty thick, almost too thick. And I did experience that I sometimes had to press two times before my touch was recognized. If this is a software or hardware problem I'm not sure about and I wouldn't call it a big problem because it only happens sometimes but still it is something that should be mentioned. The phone is using USB Type-C with support for fast charging. Because of the big 4000 mAh built-in battery it still takes some time to charge but it charges 50% in about 60 minutes. As on the normal Yumi Plus the USB Type-C port is also here on this model slightly bigger than the standard. That means that if you use other USB Type-C cables, they might not work at all or sit very loose in the port. I tested three other cables from LED-TV, CUK and Xiaomi and they did all work with the phone but my USB Type-C OTG cable didn't. I was only able to get my USB stick recognized shortly one time while I moved around and pressed on it while connected to the port. The phone is kind of tall and heavy, actually it weighs about 190 gram. The frame and back side of the phone is made of metal, only the top and bottom parts for the antennas are still in plastic. The matte black looks outstanding but it does unfortunately also leave a lot of fingerprints. The fingerprint scanner on the front has good accuracy, it works like 9 out of 10 times for me. And I appreciate that it can wake and unlock with just one touch, but it could definitely be a little bit faster. Both my Xiaomi Mi 5 and Huawei Honor 7 are a lot faster, but still I'm fine using it. The Android experience on this phone is very close to stock. There is no fancy skin on the top, it's very clean and there are only the most important apps pre-installed out of the box. Like for example a FM radio, flashlight app, music and mail apps, Google apps and the Play Store. Overall I'm extremely impressed with the RAM management on this phone. It is able to keep 10 games in the memory without any need for reloading when you multitask between them. The phone uses the Samsung 3L8 sensor and it has a special camera app not seen on other MediaTek phones. It offers a special pro photo mode where you can tweak the settings. Inside the video settings you can even also enable 4K video recording which works good. In daylight the camera performs pretty good and it is possible to get some fairly great pictures. The overall focus is consistent with no blurry corners. But as most China phones it struggles a lot when it comes to low light then the camera gets very slow, blurry and it loses a lot of details. The front facing camera is average under good lightning conditions, ok for selfie shots but nothing more.
In terms of gaming performance, the phone is good, but not perfect. Most 3D games run smooth and fast, but I did have some few frame drops sometimes in Asphalt 8 when there was a lot of stuff happening on the screen. When it comes to the sound quality, the sound via the headphone jack is loud, clear and with good bass. The built-in speaker provides quality above average. It does in my opinion sound a little bit better than on previous Lumi phones and the audio volume is also fully acceptable. Regarding the battery life, that is always a hard topic to talk about because that also depends a lot on the usage. I was able to use the phone for one to one and a half day with normal average usage. I could get about seven hours of on-screen time and overall I was satisfied with the battery. It is also great to see that the phone has a working and fast gyroscope so Google Cardboard VR will work perfect. And also the compass is working good as you can see here. So in the rest of the video I will show you info, try out different test apps, do various stuff with the phone. In this part I will not talk but just turn up for the background music. My final pros and cons will come in the end. So stay tuned if you want to know my conclusion. So now to my personal honest conclusion. I have enjoyed testing the Yumi Plus E and it has worked just fine as my daily driver for some time. Personally I am not so much into heavy big phones, more to light and compact 5 or 5.2 inch models, but if you don't mind the weight and size, then this phone could be something for you. The 6GB RAM is nice to have and the phone handles most 3D games fine and multitasking is excellent. It is also good to see that Yumi implemented a multicolored notification LED, a reliable front fingerprint scanner and that they already released some OTA updates for the phone. And I'm of course looking forward to Android 7. On the downside are things like the main camera which performs good under the right lightning conditions but rather bad in low light. Also the GPS gets a fast lock, but when using it for real map navigation, I did experience some few lost connections inside the city and it sometimes got confused, while on straight roads it had no problems. The front glass feels very thick with 2.5 curved edges. I'm not sure if it is a software or hardware problem, but some few times I had to press two times on the screen, so I would wish that the touchscreen sensitivity was a little bit higher. But overall it is still a great smartphone. I'm sure that some out there will love this phone, but you shouldn't expect a flagship or quality like seen on Xiaomi or Huawei devices. There's still a way up to the top China brands in terms of hardware quality. But for now the Yumi Plus E is the cheapest 6GB RAM smartphone and the first in the world using the MediaTek Helio P20. So if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment below. Please hit the like button and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in my next one.